Good morning, welcome to a networking lesson where the uh, network doesn't seem to work as expected. So lots of practical examples of how things can go wrong and how we can fix them. Um, today is all about the TCP IP model, the transfer control protocol and the internet protocol. Two protocols that work in partnership to make the internet work. Without these protocols, um, you would not be able to connect to the internet at any time. At the moment, we obviously can't connect to the um, the wide area network, the internet, but we can still make things work inside school. So we want to understand how we can make resilient networks, networks that can still function even when part of it breaks, and part of it seems to have broken this morning. We want to understand um, how a stack works, what the different layers of the TCPI stack, and the particular version of the TCPIP stack um, that you have to learn for Edexcel, um, and how they interact with each other, how they communicate with each other. So we've got loads of devices that connect to the internet, um, and at the moment, none of them in school can connect to the internet. Um, um, so all of these different devices communicate in different ways, but they have to be able to communicate in ways that can understand each other. So we've got to have an agreed communication protocol. If we suddenly had, um, I don't know, an Eskimo arriving from... Um, uh, I'm showing my ignorance now. I don't know whether Eskimos mean live in the North Pole or the South Pole. If they speak a different language, they don't speak my language and I don't speak their language, we are going to struggle to communicate. If you plug a device into a network and it doesn't speak the same language, it's going to struggle to communicate. So we have to agree on a set protocol, a set of rules. Done. So we talk about a layered stack. Um, and a layered stack means if something breaks on one of these layers, you don't have to understand the whole of the internet to be able to fix it. And it doesn't break the whole of the internet if something goes wrong. It means people can specialize in just fixing one of these layers at a time. And then if you fix or replace that layer, the other layers can just interact with it seamlessly. Think of it like a sandwich. If you've got a BLT and your supplier of lettuce runs out, you don't want to have to completely redesign your sandwich, you just want a different lettuce supplier. You switch lettuce suppliers, you put the lettuce in your sandwich and your sandwich works again. It's the same with the internet. We call this abstraction because we hide the unnecessary detail to focus on the most important thing. If you're operating on layer four, you don't actually care how layer one, two, three work. You just trust that they do work and you focus on the important detail to you at that particular time. And it's the same on layer one. If you operate on layer one, you don't care about any of these layers. You're only interested in the information that is directly relevant to you. So we call this a layered protocol stack. And we're going to talk about what those layers are. So our way of remembering this is ATIL. A-T-I-L. So when you put today's date on your revision notebook, I would like you to write down how to remember these and I'd like you to just write A T I L on the sides. Today's date is the 7th of October and you should have page 53 open on your revision guide. So these are the four layers that you need to understand and remember and we'll talk about what happens on each of these layers. If you remember the mnemonic, it helps you remember them because they are an ordered stack. The order is important. So the top layer with the highest level of abstraction is application, A for application. We think of this like Google Chrome. You type in YouTube and Google Chrome has to have certain protocols, certain sets of rules so that it can communicate with YouTube. And we'll t write down some example protocols like HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, application layer, um, protocols, application layer sets of rules. Then the application sends on those requests to the transport layer. So this is now at the operating system um, level, which will split your request up into packets. So the transport layer uses, surprisingly enough, TCP, Transfer Control Protocol. So it breaks down your request into packets, it sends those packets off, the packets come back, you need to reorder them into the right order, at the transport layer, you don't really care which application you're using. You don't care whether it's to do, come from Edge or Chrome or Internet Explorer. You just care that you're sending it to this particular IP address. And it's the third packet in the sequence. The next layer is the Internet layer. 
I for internet. And on this layer, we don't really care about which application initialized it. We don't really care um, about which packet it is in the sequence. We're all interested in routing. So in this layer, we look at the, the IP address where it's from, the IP address where it's going to from the packet headers, and we can route it. We don't care about the data itself. We just try and get it from one place to the next. And then the lowest layer, the link layer, is now interested in the physics of how do we transmit it. Are we taking that binary data into optical bursts down a fiber optic cable? Are we sending it using electromagnetic radiation um, at 2.4 gigahertz for Wi-Fi or 5 gigahertz for Wi-Fi? Or are we blasting it at 10 megabits per second to go down an ethernet cable or a gigabit per second? The application doesn't care how fast it gets sent. The application, Google Chrome, doesn't care if you suddenly switch from 3G to Wi-Fi because it's on a different layer. So the link layer is interested in the link between devices. The link layer doesn't care the route that the traffic came from, whether it came from run one router or another. It's only interested in the direct connection between two points. So if something changes or if something breaks, you can swap out something on one layer and the other layers will just adapt and cope. Now if we take a look at page 53, we've got some examples of protocols here and I'd like you to write some down. So you will be expected to remember at least one for each layer. So you can write down them all. File transfer protocol, you're not gonna be able to search them today because our connection to um, our wide area network, the, the internet is down today. Oh, we've got hypertext transfer protocol for downloading files and web pages. A secure version of hypertext transfer protocol. A simple mail transfer protocol for sending emails. And two protocols for receiving emails. One for downloading them off um, a server, post office protocol. And internet message, I can't remember what IMAP stands for, but it's about like accessing email um, from a server so it stays on the server. You don't need to remember what these letters stand for, but you should remember, roughly speaking, what they do. So, let's highlight them, please. Uh, I'm going to do something like uh, sending files. And then HTTP, HTTPS are both to do with requesting and downloading resources from the internet, web pages, files, videos. S stands for secure because it's encrypted. You get the little padlock in Google Chrome when it's working. One protocol for sending mails, SM, stands for simple mail pro um, transfer protocol, but I remember it as sending. And then pop an IMAP for downloading email. So that's all to do with the application. As in the user initiates this stuff. It's on an app on your phone or on your computer that this stuff works. On the transport layer, there are two main protocols, although you need to know just about one, the, the transfer control protocol. The other one is UDP. UDP is fast but unreliable. You'll use that for like online gaming or, or live streaming. TCP is reliable but a little bit slower. What does that mean? It means if a packet gets lost, then TCP will request it being sent again which for live streaming is pointless, isn't it? If you lose a, a picture of your grand's face from five minutes ago, it's pointless having that picture coming back an hour later if you're not on Skype with her anymore. Whereas if you drop one packet from downloading a very important financial file, the whole file won't open unless you get that packet. So downloading files is gonna be used for TCP. Sorry, TCP is gonna be used for downloading files. UDP is where you need it to be as fast and as instant, low latency as possible. You all know about IP addresses now. IP addresses work surprisingly on the internet layer, internet protocol layer. And the internet works with both TCP and IP. TCP for splitting stuff into packets, reassembling those packets, adding headers and footers. IP for doing the routing to send those packets to the right place. So that means the internet will work regardless of which application layer. You can use the internet to transmit your, your data even if you um, invent your own protocol. 
you can connect to the internet even if you don't use Wi-Fi or, e or Ethernet. If you invent some kind of pigeon signalling, you can still connect to the internet through pigeon signalling as long as you just replace your own link layer. It's really clever. So Ethernet, just in case we're not sure, is about wires connecting things together. So you send an electrical signal down a copper wire, usually, or twisted pairs of copper wires for a short moment of time. Wi-Fi is where you send electromagnetic radiation, radio signals in short bursts. So we've had a good question about HTTP and HTTPS. The difference is, um, until a couple of years ago, when you logged into the VLE, um, all requests were done in HTTP, including when you logged in. That meant that anyone on the same network could sniff the Ethernet traffic to see the packets that were sent to inspect that HTTP traffic, and they would see in plain text the username and the password. It's a big vulnerability. Switched over to HTTPS, which meant that anyone could sniff the packets on the Ethernet layer. They could still, sorry, they could sniff the data on the Ethernet layer. They could still see where it was coming from and where it was going to. They could see the contents of those packets, but they couldn't understand it because it was encrypted on the application layer. So let's now talk about what happens. You go to youtube.com and let's imagine that the internet connection is working. You request a video. So the user is over here. On the application layer, Google Chrome will initiate a HTTP request to download www.youtube.com. Sorry, let me turn off auto um, focus because that's really irritating. Then your operating system or your network card driver will send a packet or will create a packet that goes from your IP address, whatever that is, um, to um, uh, YouTube.com, it will work out the IP address of YouTube um, and it will send a packet to say, please can I have uh, YouTube. That packet will then get sent um, from, like it will get routed from your computer via your LAN, through your LAN gateway, through the uh, City of York gateway, which is currently not working, through to maybe um, a, a router in London, through to a, a router maybe in San Francisco or wherever, and eventually it will get to um, the right router for YouTube.com. So that's all happening through presumably undersea cables or fiber optic cables in school or um, satellite possibly, who knows. And then eventually it gets through to where it needs to get to. So you've got this cable from one computer to another. <clears throat> the receiving computer will receive those zeros and ones. Those computers will inspect that packet to see, um, <clears throat> is that for me? Or do I need to forward it on to somebody else? We look at the headers to work out the, uh, the IP address of the sender and the receiver. Then we can look at the packets and reassemble them into the right order. The server will have its own application layer a, a web server um, and it will say oh uh, this person in York has requested the web page for youtube.com I'll send back the web page for youtube.com and I'll send it in TCP packets those packets will get routed via all the different routers sent via all of the different cables received via all the different cables routed back to the right place reassembled in the right order displayed on your application so that the user can see it. So it's a way of requesting and receiving, requesting and receiving, talking to each other in a way that different computers can understand. So activity three part B, I just wanna go through this again. Remember, we have this stack here, ATIL, application transport, internet, and link. So what happens? You start on the application layer, that means we're operating, um, let's use a different example this time, let's use uh, an FTP example, file transfer protocol. So uh, let's say you're trying to save a file to um, um, a, a web server somewhere. So your application says, I want to save this file, not to your personal computer, but to a web server somewhere um, else. You send an FTP 
request that says upload this file. On the transfer control protocol, um, as in on the transport layer, you will then transmit some packets. You'll create some packets that um, requests um, that you send this uh, this packet. It needs to be sent from your IP address to the IP address of the server you want to save the files on. It's going to get sent across Wi-Fi or Ethernet, whatever. It's going to get received by Ethernet or um, Wi-Fi or whatever. It's going to get routed from one place to another by looking at the headers, the IP address of the sender and the receiver. The request is going to get reassembled in the right order. If there's a packet missing, we ask for it to be resent. Otherwise, we put all the packets together and we give them to the application, the FTP server, and, and that FTP server can say, ah, oh, this person wants to upload a file. It will then receive all of that file. How will it receive the file? Well, it gets lots and lots of packets containing the file. All of those packets will have got routed across the internet, sent via Ethernet or Wi-Fi or anything else. That file will eventually get put into the right order and handed to the FTP server. The FTP server will save that file and it will probably confirm that it's been done. How will it do that? Well, it will send an FTP acknowledgement. How will it do that? Well, it will send TCP packets back to the original um, client. It will send it across the internet by looking at the IP address of the sender and the recipient. It will send it back across Wi-Fi or Ethernet or fiber optic or whatever. It then gets received, routed in the right place, reassembled um, into um, packets in the right order, sorry, a single block of information from all the individual packets and the FTP client gets confirmation that the file has been uploaded and then the user can see on the application that that's happened. So when you're finished you need to save and upload your Word document to Half Term 7 Networks 2. I'm not going to ask for an extension um, on this, I'd just like you to um, write out that last activity in as much detail as you can. It goes on to Half Term 7 Networks 2 and then <clears throat> at the end of the lesson, if we just have a look at one of these pictures. Networks is uh, chapter four. So I would recommend that you spend the final 20 minutes of this lesson doing a topic four revision quiz. Every time you click on one of these, you'll get five different random questions. Um, just to recap on networks.